Hello again. Um, so welcome back. Today I just got Luminar Neo, the media version. It's a step up. There goes my phone. It's a step up from the technical build, which my last video was on. So in this, it's going to show us you know, roughly what you're getting in Luminar Neo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the menu. I'm going to walk you through the settings today. And then over the next couple of videos, I'm going to go into a lot more depth on power line removal AI. And I'm going to go into a bit more depth on the dust removal AI and relight AI. But as in for today, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run you through what's included. Now, I should say the user interface as it stands looks a lot like Luminar AI. So don't get a shot when you look, shock when you look at it. The, I suppose the, the UI looks very familiar, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but this isn't the finished version. This is nowhere near the finished version. There's going to be a number of upgrades. There's going to be a lot more features put in. And before we even look at that, I just want to talk to you about a few quick things. Firstly, the reason why Luminar Neo is going to be better than Luminar AI is it's going to be faster. It's going to include layers again, and there's going to be a number of new features. Now, not all these features are included as of yet. So um, I can't talk to you about some of them, um, but the ones I can talk to you about are Relight AI, Dust Removal AI, and Power Line Removal AI. Anyway, let's just get into it and see what it looks like. But please do bear in mind, this is not the finished user interface. It is going to be different. This isn't even the beta version. So um, enough talking, let's just have a look. So this is the Luminar Neo media version. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pop in here into the first photograph here. We're gonna go up here and click on edit. And this is gonna open out our editing controls. So the first one you'll see above on top is Crop AI. Once I click on Crop AI, it's gonna come up and it's gonna show you the Crop AI button. Once I press this, it is then going to recommend the crop for you. So that's actually the recommended crop it's suggesting there now. So again, it's reasonably straightforward. Nothing new to anyone there really, I suppose, as such. But we go back here then and we look at the develop settings. In the develop tab, when I click on this, we have a whole lot of settings here, which between our exposure, our smart contrast, our highlights, our shadows, our blacks and our whites. Then we've got our curves controls and we have our color, which is our temperature, tint, saturation and vibrancy. So again, all the main controls are in the develop section. Uh, as we go down along, then we have sharpen, so you can sharpen the image, then adjust the radius of the sharpening, and then the masking. We have noise reduction, which is luminosity and color. Then we have optic auto corrections, so defringe is one of them. And then when we go to optics manual corrections, so any correcting any distortion in your lens or vignetting, here we have lens distortion and devignette. So. Again, develop, there's nothing staggeringly new in this. So we go down to Enhance AI. And when we go on Enhance AI, we have Accent AI and Sky Enhancer AI. So again, we'll close that fill up along. We go down to Erase. In Erase then, we have a number of different options. We can use the Erase tool. So if I looked along and I said, oh look, I want to get rid of this aerial here. I can just click on that and go over here and click on Erase. And there we go, that's our aerial gone. So, or if I want to remove power lines, I can click on this and it'll try and remove power lines. Now there's no power lines there, so it can't remove power lines. You have removed dust spots, I can click on that too as well again, and it says dust spots removed. But again, there were no dust spots at the image, so I can't remove them. So, again, reasonably straightforward. Structure AI, again, anyone who has used um, Luminary AI before would be familiar with Structure AI. You can adjust your amount and boost here. Uh, we're going to color it in again, so it's saturation, vibrancy, and we have our HSL sliders here too as well. So uh, I'll just give you a second to look at that and go to color. We got a black and white. In black and white, we can convert our image to black and white and just luminance and saturation. And just go back all of that and we go to details. So we have small details, medium details, large details, sharpening, detail masking, and you have sharpening masking. There are controls in details. We go to that, we go back down to denoise. So denoise, there's luminosity denoise and color denoise. And then we have an advanced settings tab. So when you click on that, there's a boost control. So I just close that back up along again for now. In landscape then, we have dehaze, golden hour and foliage enhancer. Advanced settings then, basically you can adjust the hue of the foliage itself. 
So that's our landscape setting. When we go to vignette, again, reasonably straightforward. You can adjust the amount of the vignette and we go to advanced controls, roundness, feather, inner light, all reasonably straightforward again in vignette. So now we're getting to our creative controls. And the first one is Relight AI, which is one of the new ones. So we can adjust our brightness near and we can adjust our brightness. So that's adjusting our brightness near. And then this is adjusting our brightness far away. So that's going to, yeah, that's working quite well there. And then we can adjust the depth. So you can see it just floating across the water there now and go up along the building. Perfect. Advanced settings then. Does D halo, does warmth near and warm far. So if you wanted to pop up the warmth a small bit for the nearby part of the image, you can do that. And you can also cool down the far off section of the sky. So you could say, ah, that's a bit more balanced, depending on your own personal taste. So again, Relight AI is something I'm going to be coming back to. Sky AI. So for this, we can actually change the sky. So if I just click on this one for argument's sake, sunset clouds, bang. All of a sudden, we have a new sky. So again, nothing, nothing unusual to anyone who's used Luminar AI, I suppose. So sky orientation, again, you can move it around. Mask refinements for the sky. Scene relighting, again, relight strength, relight saturation, relight human. Reflections, then the reflection amount and water blur. And sky adjustment. So again, reasonably straightforward so just closing down sky ai we're going to go into atmosphere ai so on atmosphere ai you can adjust fog and things or introduce fog and things you can see the fog is coming in up in the top part of the image there now and if i adjust the depth it's going to bring it back here and then adjust the lightness so yeah that all that all works <laughs> in saying that i just crashed it i just crashed it so so yes i just basically managed to crash luminar neo but it's one of the things that luminar or skylum actually said to me is that look this is not a stable version this is probably going to crash in you a few times so I'll just completely disregard that it is not finalized it is just to show people roughly what's coming with it so that was atmosphere ai we're going to go into sun rays next so basically speaking, you can place the sun, you can put in the amount, the overall look, sun ray length, penetration, and then we have sun settings, so sun radius, sun glow radius, sun glow amount, ray settings, the number of rays, randomize, and then we can adjust the warmth too as well. So again, people with Luminar AI would be familiar with this. Dramatic then again, so if I just click this slider up along, it just gives you a slightly harsher, it's a bit like adjusting a clarity control, I suppose, and desaturating the image slightly. So, um, so yeah, that's dramatic. If I go to mood then, we can add various lots here then. So if I go Anaheim there now, and you can adjust the amount. So, and we've contrast and we've saturation too as well again. So, uh, right, toning. When you go into toning, there is the amount, there's the saturation, there's the U, and you can go shadows and highlights. So, and our balance controls here then between our shadows and highlights. So, matte, the amount, the fade, the contrast, the vividness, and then color toning, range, hue, and saturation. Mystical, so we can go amount, shadows smoothness then we have colorize which is saturation and warmth so all of that then we have glow we have soft focus and just to give you an idea there's glow art and effect and art and effect soft so just click on that we have our amount and we've got our advanced settings so softness brightness contrast and warmth so it's glow film grain is the amount and then size and roughness so the size and the roughness slider controls Portrait Block AI, again, the amount, the control, the size, the softness, the strength, then the background, um, if I can click on that, I can't actually click on that at the moment. Okay, let's go to Face AI, there was no face on here at the moment, so Face Light, Slim Face, Eyes and Mouth will not open, fair enough. Um, skin again, then again, is the amount, Shine Removal. On body AI, we have shape and we have abdomen controls. 
high key then we have amount standard high key dynamic high key blacks and then we go to our advanced settings so here we have glow contrast and saturation um, professional controls then we have super contrast so the highlights contrast highlights balance midtones contrast midtones balance shadows contrast and shadows balance and the last one then is our color harmony so we have brilliance and we have warm controls we have color contrast so the amount and the hue we have split control split <laughs> split color warmed so we have warm and we have cool and the last is color balance so on color balance then we have our shadows and we can change shadows midtones and highlights so we can change the color balance on each of those three different parameters um so they are basically your controls so far in lunar neo again as i say layer controls and whatnot all to be introduced and the other handy little thing is above here in the history tab so you can actually go in here and you can see what you've actually done to the photograph so if i just go back and let's say for argument's sake i'm going to start editing this fill this photograph i'm going to go into develop what i do is pop the exposure a small bit bring our highlights down and bring our shadows up a small bit and you say look yeah kind of reasonably happy with that and i'm going to go down here then to sky ai and i'm going to pop in there we go we just make something a bit dramatic there now at the moment and we're going to go down here to reflection will it let us do it it won't at the moment um sky orientation mask refinement let's 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 see what else we can do here now so if i say oh you know i want to go back up and i want to pop in sun rays i'm going to place the sun center right and then i'm going to pop in the amount now um yeah our sun center doesn't seem to be very centered <laughs> that's <laughs> someone missed the bullseye with that one <laughs> that's <laughs> again as i said this is more about showing facilities more so than anything else but just to give you an idea but like what, what one, of the, one of the handy things about this is right you can pop in sun rays and then you can go back into sun rays then again and you could say actually you know i want to do that again i want to put in a second sun you know so you can go amount and you can move your slider around the place and all of a sudden we have two suns now what it could be really cool is if you're taking photographs on stage you know at a live gig or something you say god you know i want to put in like i'm um, flaring coming off the lights now and whatnot then bang there we go you can have two big lights up along here the artist right in the middle there and that just looks really awesome so i'm um, again the, all these things it's adding creative possibilities so i um, anything else i can think of right now not really because look being honest you, um i've been playing with this for about two hours uh, as you can see i'm still not fully versed on the features i'm not going to give my review on this the one thing i will say is i did try the photographs with that i used on the power line removal ai before and i still had the same results but what i'm told is this is basically the same um the same algorithm the same software as they showed us in the technical build only they've added in all these other features just to give you an idea what you're going to get with luminar neo so what do i think of luminar neo um i suppose being honest you, i i can't say an awful lot about it right now uh, i think it really is too early to give an opinion on luminar neo um i can see where it's going i know what's coming and if skylum get this right i think luminar neo is going to be something really cool I really do. I think it's going to be something really, really cool. Now, does everyone need to buy it? Mm, I don't know. I think it's down to the way you edit your photographs. It's a bit like having Photoshop and Lightroom. They're both Adobe products. But not everyone has both. You know, people, people tend to rely on one or the other. Now, I use both of them. But in my landscape photography, I tend to use Luminary AI or Lightroom. And then I tend to use Photoshop then for the more technical aspects of photography, using layers and whatnot and clipping pad, all this sort of malarkey. So, you know, it, it just, it, it's different strokes for different folks. But um, I genuinely can see where this is going. And I really, I, I'm, I'm really grateful companies like Skylum are around 
and they're pushing the boat on the software and they're really pushing it out there and they're starting to give us I, I believe something that's going to be special and it's pushing all these other companies forward to as well and their pricing is just out of this world genuinely for the price of let's say, even go back to Luminary AI for the price of Luminary AI for what you get that is just absolutely crazy it is fantastic value for money it is a great great bit of software it's great fun to use you can do a massive amount with it and it's so easy Luminar neo i don't know as of yet um it is looking good it is looking good and i can really see where this is going and i'm really really excited to get the beta version and once that's up and running properly, I really want to push this and I really want to see how well it works. And as I say, I'm going to give my own my own review on this copy of Luminar Neo, but I think it's very unfair. I think it really is unfair to give a copy of Luminar Neo based on what I've been sent out now. And I just want to say also too as well, thank you to everyone over at Skylum for, for trying to produce the software, for sending it out to me, and... Um, you know, just just for making photography editing easier for all of us. And doing it at a reasonable price too as well. Because credit where credit's due, it is fantastic value for money. So um, thank you everyone over at Skylum. I really cannot wait to get my hands on the beta version of Luminar Neo. And especially the finalised version of Luminar Neo. And um, until then, I will be posting another video on Powerline AI, and another one on Dust Removal AI, and another one on Real Light AI. So I will be getting back to those soon enough. So um, thanks for watching, everyone. And if you have any questions, do feel free to ask them. Just remember, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just sharing my opinions, and I haven't said too much, much because I don't have an opinion in this as of yet. So uh, yeah, that's basically it. Look, um, talk to you soon, everyone, and see you out there.